Hello again. As some of you may know by now, I'm changing to an electric car from this uh, petrol engine three-cylinder Peugeot 208. I don't want you to be worried about that, so I'm going to uh, talk through some of the things that will just disappear as problems when learning to drive or passing the driving test um, with an electric car which has an automatic gearbox. So um, let's change the balance of the exposure and off we go. But not before I've put my seatbelt on. The engine is running. So you don't have to put it in gear. There'll be an automatic handbrake as well. So you don't have to uh, do that job with a second lever with your left hand. You don't have to think about whether to keep the clutch down or not here. And when gravity stops pulling you forward, you don't have to come up just enough to the bite and coordinate your right and left foot like I'm doing now all the way down with the clutch and a little bit of brake. You don't have to coordinate adding gas and then coming up through the bite to get the car to move. Let's bring that down a touch. You don't have to worry about which gear you're in by reaching down or worse still looking down at the gear lever because the car will, uh, well I was going to say it will choose gear it needs to be in for itself. That's true of a traditional automatic gearbox car, but in an electric car there are no gears to shift. It just puts more electricity through a magnet and that uh, generates more of a, a magnetic field that pushes the wheels around in a certain direction. So there's no um, thinking, is it better that I'm in gear one as I approach this van um, or gear two, worrying about the engine revs getting too low for uh, the engine to be able to keep moving and the car not to stall and having stalled you're sitting there dead in the road a bit of road kill perhaps you might say um, for a few seconds while you try and get the car started again no worries about the sound from the engine getting louder uh, which some people find a bit distracting or distressing um, what else have we got speed bumps if you came to rest on a speed bump and you then had to pull away you might have to do a hill start which uh, people don't like there's a bigger risk of stalling i've put the handbrake on here but that is easier in um, a modern electric car my hand is generally on the steering wheel for longer which is where it should be controlling the position of my car terms of fine-tuning uh, the uh, direction I suppose given that we've got the COP26 conference happening at the moment um, about climate change that um, the positioning of a car is like the politics of a country or the world it's what's happening in fine detail in the immediate future and the, uh, the history of uh, the world is a longer term thing. It's uh, the um, placement, the direction of the car, um, both of which you achieve by controlling the, uh, the steering wheel. So we're in a 20 zone, that's why I'm going at this speed. I'm in gear three. I'd forgotten there, so I had to reach down to, uh, to check. I don't have to take my eyes off the road to look at the rev counter and to be able to hear my engine to work out which gear I'm in, uh, in an electric car. It doesn't make any sound anyway, apart from a little bit of tyre noise and wind noise. So um, you don't have that distraction, it's more relaxing. There's less, less work to be done with your left foot and your left hand, so it's less tiring. Uh, there's less risk of coasting. In fact, no risk of coasting. Coasting, of course, is where, as you're driving along, if you see something change and you put your clutch down early, the car is just freewheeling. And that means there's a delay in reconnecting the engine, which will then either slow you down a little or um, enable you to speed up if you put more fuel into the engine put more coal on the fire essentially and that's basically what's going on in an, intern in an internal combustion engine. You're burning fossil fuel so there's a bigger carbon footprint with burning petrol or oil, diesel, coal, 
or gas as the Americans call it and generating electricity can be done in much cleaner ways with less nasty byproducts in the case of an internal combustion engine in a traditional car you get a lot of waste heat so that can be useful on a cold day like this morning we can turn the heat up in the car once the engine has got warm but you won't get any benefit from your car until um, your coal is alight and it's warmed up the coals themselves effectively then the heat starts to come out into your living room from a traditional coal fire with an electric car just like an electric heater you can just flick the switch and you can get the uh, electricity to generate some heat straight away in fact you can even pre-warm your car so you only get into it on a cold morning when it's already nice and toasty um, for that matter you can defrost your windows um, before you get in and try and drive off without being able to see properly or at risk of them uh, frosting up when you start driving um, and the cool air blowing into the car may chill the windows just enough that the tiny bit of moisture from your breath condenses on the inside of the glass and just as you go under the first street light at night um, suddenly everything frosts and you really cannot see where the curve is. What other advantages? Um, people worry mainly about the disadvantages of automatic cars that have heard from the generation um, above that they're expensive, that they drink more fuel, they're more costly to uh, repair and generally to run. Well that's true of older automatics because automatic gearboxes only tended to suit heavier, larger cars in order to get smooth gear changes. These days there are plenty of um, up to 20 year old uh, second hand small cars, tiny cars like the Nissan Micra for example, uh, which have beautifully smooth uh, transmission of power from their engine to the wheels. Uh, my mother had a 1995 Nissan Micra, which she had from new, and she actually offered it to me. Um, for my first teaching car, it was automatic. I drove it once or twice, beautifully smooth, 1.3 engine, very cheap to insure, uh, very well built, um, very well thought out as a design. You still see lots of them on the road. You could pick one up for less than a thousand pounds. So when you take a driving test, and at this time of COVID, when there's a huge backlog, everybody wants to pass first time because it's going to take a long time to get another test slot. You would take the same test, you'd be tested to the same standard, but there's just fewer things to go wrong if you've not got to do so much work with your left hand and so much coordination, such as I'm doing here. All this kerfuffle with handbrake and moving your right foot around so much so it should be easier to pass the driving test. You can keep your attention outside the car. Certainly it will be cheaper to learn to drive from scratch because a new driver's confidence will rise much quicker. They're not worrying about operating the equipment inside the car. They can just think of it like a go-kart. You get in it and you're looking outside. You've just got one foot, your right foot, that's pressing either the fast pedal or the slow pedal. And even when you come off the fast pedal in an electric car, you benefit from what's called regenerative braking, which means you can select a mode that makes the car slow down as if you are gently pressing the brake pedal, not just rolling along the road. And the energy is recouped from the movement of the car and fed back into the battery. So they're cheaper to run. They're also, if you're buying um, a modern automatic car, they're cheaper to run because uh, whether it's got um, an internal combustion engine or it is electric, uh, it uh, will know when to change gear if it's got gears. A traditional petrol or diesel fueled car, it will know when to change gear uh, better than you, the human, and uh, do it more efficiently so it will actually use less liquid fuel in 
in terms of an electric, uh, you can get your fuel for free and uh, at uh, supermarkets, for example, while you go and have a coffee or do some shopping. Um, there are still places you can do that, but instead of about 12 pence per mile, I'm looking forward to paying about 5 pence a mile in terms of fuel for the car. Uh, there are also lots of manufacturers offering um, leasing schemes for cars so that you pay a fixed amount per month uh, rather than buying a brand new expensive car outright. And there's no doubt that electric cars are much more expensive. But I got my, uh, my new electric car, which is second hand, um, after uh, it had done 10,000 miles and I've saved £6,000 I think um, because the new price is about 30, 31,000 um, and I'm getting mine for under 25,000 um, but the servicing cost is going to be lower anyway back to the, the worries about the driving test when you've passed your driving test in an automatic gearbox car, might be electric, might be liquid fueled, you can only drive automatic cars um, on your own. You could buy a manual car if you really want to have a particular model or you like the business of changing gear, um, or somebody offers a car, an old car to you that's free, uh, maybe something for you know, you can still uh, practice if you need to in that manual car with somebody over the age of 21 who's held a full UK driving license for three years at least and then you could sit a manual test which would be the same test which you'd be better able to pass um, which would cost you £62 during the week and £75 at the weekend you could even use that car that you bought for the test you'll find the uh, requirements they're the pretty minimal requirements detailed online for what the car must have basically it must be roadworthy and be insured for a driving test most insurance policies will cover that for um, a car that you own or uh, you could use a friend's car that they own it's only rental companies that tend to deny useful testing or track days or racing so you could do a manual car test if you feel the need or you could um, decide no I'm gonna buy a small cheap automatic and build up a no claims discount and then when you've uh, solved the problem of very high insurance in the first year for a new driver, because no insurance company knows what you're like as a risk for them to take, um, then you might decide to get a more expensive car. It might be automatic, it might be electric, it might be a liquid fueled manual car. Uh, so those are a lot of the uh, pros and cons, but I think the pros these days are very much now outweighing the cons. And having driven automatics myself in the past, um, it's not just older people whose legs are tired that uh, like them. I think um, uh, very young people are going to be strongly encouraged by the environmental consequences um, and opportunities, especially with this conference happening um, this week and next, to think electric. Okay, cheers.